Hi right, guys, today I'm going to be showing you a quick rundown of the last sore clips that we had. And uh, this pertains to something that I was looking through these pictures and something was very odd about this. Now, uh, we're going to go right at the beginning here. Start right at the beginning. This is the sun before. Now, I had to use uh, manual lenses with a project control so we can get the shut down the light so we can actually see what was going on in the sun. So that's what the uh, first picture looks like at full open. And uh, after some of the clouds were coming through on that side, so uh, just watch out. Uh, clouds were coming in and out. And this is a very uh, closed down aperture, so the f-stop is really uh, uh, high. So the, the reason why is so you can get only the light from the sun, okay? Uh, or we can see anything. Um, we're going to keep that one for now, and we're going to just you know go through these pictures and see what we got. Now, the issue that people have is the moon, right? There was no moon that day. Well, the moon wasn't there. That's the problem. Uh, there is nothing outside here. You can't really see the moon. It's not, it doesn't exist. You know, if something is in front of something, it will be seen, but uh, yet there's nothing. And we continue on watching these pictures. Okay, and we go here. Keep going. And uh, we just zoom in again and again. You think, oh, there's something there. Well, there's a moon right there, right in front of it. Well, if the moon was in front of it, um, let's do something here. Uh, no, it's not there. Or you're telling me that the entire sky is the moon. Okay, so no, the moon wasn't there. Okay, um, and we'll go, go forward. Okay, we're going to go through the pictures here. There's going to be some interesting pictures coming up here. And uh, let's see here. We showed you that one, that one there, that one there, that one there, and that one there. Uh, and now we're starting to get really, really better details here. Okay, we got really good shots here. So again, on this one, I'm going to invert. I'm going to actually play with the uh, curves. I'm going to actually actually deliberately move the curves down. And the reason why is because you want to see what's going on around the picture. Okay, so we're gonna we gotta re bring this down here. Okay. Now we can't manipulate the picture so much that we eliminate data. As you can see, there's nothing here. Okay. There's nothing at all. And uh, we'll go ahead and invert it, just to be on the safe side. This is what the inversion is. Okay. There's nothing here. There's nothing blocking it. And we'll go ahead and. Undo the invert, move on to the next picture. You're going to really like this at the end. Really, really, really like this. I'm going to show you what the sun actually looks like and what is around the sun. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. We'll go and uh, invert it first to see what was going on around it. And again, you can see clouds. These are the hidden clouds that were there. But again, you come here, there's nothing outside, there's not, uh, nothing outside the sun, okay? Nothing whatsoever. And now, what I think is really what the sun is, okay? Now, this is a, p a picture that I, I can't tell you how I did this, because if I did, then uh, some of the mofus at NASA might, uh, might catch on to it. But basically what I did is I'm... I'm uh, I did a few steps here in Photoshop and outside of Photoshop with another application I will mention to give me the detail of what is the color of the sun? What is the heat source of the sun? Where's the heat source of it? Do you notice something around the sun that's very peculiar here? It's pitch black. This image represents the radiation levels. Okay. Now as you can see here around the sun it's very cold. Okay, getting closer to it. Further away, you start to see the radiation starting to happen. So my theory, and it's, it's not something you should believe in, but my theory is simple. The sun is cold, and our atmosphere is being irradiated. Ergo, you're hot at 10 feet off the ground, but at 50,000 feet, you'll be freezing your ass off. But you'll be 50,000 feet closer to the sun. Well... What if you were 100,000 feet closer to the sun? Would you be warmer or colder? Well, atmosphere, right? Density. Air density, right? That's why you're cold. 
we are warm because of our air density down here. At 100,000 feet, you're not going to be burning, okay? You will be freezing your ass off. Why? Well, you're 100,000 feet closer to the sun. Why won't you be burning? No. The further away from the sun and the denser your air is, the more hot you're going to get. Why? Because the air is being irradiated. I've, I've always believed that the sun was never a heat source. I always thought that the sun must, have, must be doing something to our atmosphere to warm it up. Okay? Now, this is just a theory. It's not completely 100% explained. For example, where, what about the cold parts in Antarctica and the other areas? It's cold there, but the sun is on top of it. I still haven't explained that. That's why I said this is a theory. We need people to look into this to, say, to actually see how would it work in the cold environments. For example, the same sun is still up there, but why are environments that are hot always hot? Okay? People say, well, it's the sun, it's indirect light. No, it isn't. There's something else going on, okay? So look at this picture again, and pay attention to the area around it. There is nothing blocking the sun. Another thing that I'm kind of uh, pushing towards is the sun, okay, is concaved on one side. This would explain eclipses. If the sun turned on itself and it was concave on the other side, and it's black on the other side, then you would see the sun in its natural shape. If it's concaved, that's why you see the crescent. If nothing's blocking the front of it to cause a crescent, then it must be itself, right? You remove all possibilities, and the sun itself is concaved on one side, and the sun is turning. Okay, when the sun turns back around, you're going to see the front of it again. So, again, take this with a grain of salt, right? This is not proven. It's just my idea. And this is the what I got off that picture. And the last picture will be the same one and the original picture that I used, okay? That's the original picture. And this is the one after. So what you see here in this picture that's missing is actually what's in here. That's actually what's in here. And I'm going to adjust it one more time so you can use so you know I'm not bullshitting you. And here's the inversion of it. Okay, and now where is the moon? Okay. Now if the sun is concave on one side, right? Think of the sun as concave and black. That's what you're going to be seeing as it turns around. The sun could, ju could just be turning. So again, this is just my idea. It's not proven. But again, we'll go back to that, that one there. And it's a solid black mass. Okay? So that's the inversion of it. And this is the one I came up with after from the original one. Now I'm going to rearrange that. Okay? So that's what the sun looks like if you need specifics I'll you can email it for them uh, leave a message I can tell you some specifics but I really don't want to say how I got to this stage because it involves not just Photoshop but a few other applications okay and the reason why is because I don't want stupid idiots at NASA to see how I did this okay in these days of people telling the truth getting hanged for it <laughs> You gotta be careful what you post. So, anyways, this is the original picture of the eclipse. That's the best one I got of all the pictures. Okay, and this one here. That's what I ended up at the end. That's what we get. Okay. They are uh, shot in RAW format, just to let you know. This, these are just the JPEG versions of them. So, they, it was shot in RAW. So, there you go. That's what the eclipse looks like, and there's no moon whatsoever, nothing blocking it. So, thanks for watching.